What is going on guys, my name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I'm a third year medical student studying at King's College London and today I have a very uh, special guest with me. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Hilton. I'm a medical doctor, I'm also a dentist and a UK medical school admissions expert. And I run an online course that helps people get into medical school at their first attempt. I'll be working with Ash uh, to provide you guys with a discount to the course that you just mentioned uh, called Future yep. Doctors. So do you want to give us a bit more information about what that is? What Future Doc was trying to achieve was a one-stop, all-in-one course that helps people go from start to finish when applying to medical school. Now, what I realised from researching is that there's not a lot out there for international students who are applying to the UK. So what I wanted to do was provide a fully comprehensive package that allows them to go from start to finish and also helps them with extra resources for the, for the hurdles along the way that you face, such as exams, personal statements, right, interview, right. and provide just a one-stop shop to give you everything that you need to get into your top choice medical school first time. Right, and as I said, I'll be working with FutureDoc uh, to give you guys a percentage off the package. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description down below as well as a referral code to give you guys um, a little treat. Cool, all right, so I've got a bunch of questions here on my phone that I'll be asking you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess what makes sense is to ask you the first question, which is why do you think students should apply to the UK specifically? Yeah, well, a medical degree from the UK is probably one of the most highly sought after. And that's because the universities that provide these degrees are some of the highest in the world. For example, at the moment of recording, uh, Oxford is the highest ranked medical school in the world. And Cambridge is about third at the moment. And then the other medical schools now have to kind of keep up with that high competition. So the bar is really high, which means that the standard of medical schools across the UK is, is really raised. Another thing that's really important in the UK is we have the National Health Service, also known as the NHS, which is a, a nationwide service. So we have a lot of standardised data, right, but right. the main thing about that, it allows a lot of nationwide research projects, which gives us a lot of famous studies and famous Mm -hmm. discoveries that have come out of the UK. Right, right. But the main thing is that because of that standardisation, we have really good, thorough training. Mm -hmm. So to couple the five to six years that you'll do at medical school with the two years of foundation training, which is highly supervised, standardised and really well carried out, doctors build a really, really good foundation of skills and are really sought after after that because you essentially position yourself to be able to go on to further training anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And doctors from the UK who are qualified and trained here are really well A, looked after and B, sought after by other countries and other medical institutions because they recognise that our standard of training is really high. Sure, sure. The way I kind of like to like think about it is the medical degrees here in the UK is like a bit of a passport and allows you to travel wherever you want in the world um, and have a career pretty much everywhere in the world. Yeah, 100% Kenji, I'd say that's a, a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, moving on to question number two. So the next question that I have for you is, how do you apply to a medical school in the UK and how is that different uh, for, for international students? No matter where you're applying from, we yeah. have a standardised central centralised system, okay. uh, which is called UCAS, which stands for, I think, the Universities and Colleges mm. Application System. Okay, actually, I, I didn't know that actually, even though I used it like two or three times. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the... Anyway, everyone knows it as UCAS. Yeah. Um, and no matter where you're applying from, you go through that system. Um, however, things that differ for international students that they have to consider are you have to show proof of English, English language competency if okay. you come from a non-English speaking country. So for that, you have to do a examination and get a certificate to prove that you have the competency of English language. Mm -hmm. What, so what, what exam is that exactly? Is that so IELTS it's the IELTS. IELTS, yes, okay. Yes. So this exam, does, does everyone have to do it? Because um, you said like, you come from a non-English speaking country. <laughs> but what if, let's say, you come from Botswana or let's say Kenya, and one of the national languages for Kenya is English, do you still have to do that exam? I mean, normally you should be okay, but what, I, what I'd always advise is call the university and check mm. with the um, entry. There's a medical application team at each university mm -hmm. and they will be the person who clarifies whether you need it or not. Okay. One bit of advice I, was, I would always give for your competency test is 
depending on the university that you want to apply to, and um, some universities such as Cambridge and yeah. I believe UCL do, yeah. they provide their own uh, English language course and the certificate. So okay. if you're worrying about whether the certificate that you have will be accepted at the university, mm -hmm. that's one great way to guarantee that it will be. Because if you know that, say, you, you want to apply to Cambridge, mm -hmm. then if you do their English course, then obviously they're going to accept that. Okay. And I think the only exception is if you have an undergraduate degree that was taught in England. One of my friends, um, he applied to medical school as a graduate, so he already had a degree mm. in the UK. And that's one of the exceptions where they they don't um, they don't have, like you don't have to sit the IELTS exam. Yeah, of course, because if you can prove that you can do a whole degree in an English language, then that's probably good enough to uh, so, yeah, <laughs> to prove exactly. that you're competent at English. Definitely. Uh, and that moves nicely on to the next question. Yeah. So the next question is, how does funding work for international students? Like, how much do they pay? And yeah, just generally, how does it work? Yeah, so for this you have to divide the students into non-EU and EU students, so students applying from the European Union. Okay. And I mean even with Brexit going through, the government have announced that EU students will still be eligible for funding. So that means that anybody from inside the European Union applying to medical school mm -hmm. is eligible for tuition fee loan, uh, maintenance grant, which is just uh, funding just to um, fund your daily living mm -hmm. and also uh, maintenance loan as well. Um, then when you look at non-EU students that's when it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay. So the fees are quite expensive and they're right. quite varied depending on A the university mm -hmm. and B the stage of your medical okay. uh, stage you're at in medical school. Okay. So Fees for non-EU students vary anything from about fourteen to thirty-nine thousand pounds a year. Um, I, I, if you want to look at um, a video I've got on my YouTube channel of how to choose your medical school, this is a question that factors into it because obviously you need to know that you can afford the fees for each university, mm -hmm. and the universities with a higher prestige will obviously charge more and those who are maybe newer and less high ranking in the in the school rankings will will charge a bit less mm. um, non-clinical years are a bit cheaper so the lower end of that scale that, that, I, that I mentioned earlier will be for the year pre-clinical years which is normally years one and two and then they also charge a separate fee for if you do something called an intercalated year which we can talk about later mm. but that is Again, a separate fee structure, which is usually quite reduced. Okay. Now, uh, for funding for international students, I, I do talk a lot on my course about where they can get funding mm -hmm. outside of the kind of government student finance mm -hmm. system. Okay. Uh, and so, if you want to go to futuredoc.co, there's lots of resources there about that. And lastly, um, what do you think the challenges are uh, for international students? And also, what are some ways that they can overcome these challenges? Yeah, I think, when I think back to when I applied to medical school, yeah. um, I had a really great teacher. Um, I actually didn't go to a, a particularly great school. I went to my local comprehensive. And I was very lucky to have a, a guy called Mr. Townsend, who okay. knew. Shout out to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're listening, <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, Mr. Townsend, thank you very much. Um, but he was so knowledgeable about the whole application process, yeah. about each individual medical school. Right, he right. had such a well, I mean, he'd been doing this job advising mm. students for such a long time. He had a wealth right. of knowledge that really only now when I look back, I realize how useful mm. it was because he guided me each step of the way. Okay. Now the problem with international students is they don't have that proximity. They mm. don't have, I'm, I'm sure every school has a, a Mr. Townsend that can help them yeah, and yeah. Um, give them the information that they need. Mm -hmm. And so many mistakes I see that medical students, that uh, medical applicants make, mm -hmm. is that they just do silly little mistakes that just mm -hmm. a little bit of information would have, would have completely stopped right. them doing that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's really the, the proximity thing. So if you look at, you know, if you want to be a good actor, you go mm. to Hollywood. If you right, want to right. be, a, if you yeah. be a startup mm. investor, you go to Silicon Valley. Right, right. And, th and that's because proximity has a massive impact mm. on your success. Yeah. So the way, the way I've structured my course is to try and give people that mm. same level playing field, to have right. access to somebody who knows, access to all the right information, mm. and 
the ability to make the right decisions and avoid the common mistakes that people make when applying to medical school okay. that they hinder their chances without them even realizing and then all they get is a rejection letter and no feedback as to why it's gone wrong right okay and as kind of final summary is there any like particular tips or advice that you give to someone who's applying for medical school uh, on the other side of the world yeah so i think the number one thing is preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, the more information, the more you can gather about the process, mm -hmm. the better you can prepare your application. Allow plenty of time. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot to do and yeah, yeah. a lot to, well, the more that you put into the preparation, the easier the whole process is. The more work experience you can get, the more uh, leadership skills you can show, the more hobbies and interests you can undertake now, the, just, the more you'll have to talk about during that application mm -hmm. process. You'll be able to write more on your personal statement, yep. have a higher standard of things that you're talking about. Um, you'll have better things to talk about interview, which will make your interview go easier. Mm -hmm. If you can start preparing now for your BMAT mm -hmm. uh, or your UCAT exam, that will obviously give you a higher score, it will open the door to more uh, universities that have right. a higher threshold for entry. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, yeah, those two, preparation, gather all the information, mm -hmm. and finally you've got to believe in yourself. You, mm -hmm. you really can do it. I mean, it, it's a hard task to do, mm -hmm. but I promise you with the right guidance and with the right information and the right resources, anybody can raise themselves to that level that you need to get into medical school so if you're sitting there thinking you know it's not for me i don't have x y and z mm. these are just excuses and i promise you once you kind of get over that psychology and realize that there is a way and you start seeing the path you really start believing and i promise you if you work hard and you do believe you'll get there yeah that's really good advice i 100 percent agree with that um i guess if I, if I can kind of give any advice myself it would be to have both sight and vision, so sight in the presence of you know, what I need to do every single day to get to that stage, and also the vision to look ahead uh, maybe one or two years and know exactly what you need to do. I remember like when I applied to medical school, I got a pen and paper and I wrote down every single thing, like every little milestone that needs to be accomplished in order to get that, that offer. Mm. So have the vision to look ahead you know, one to two years, like you said, uh, yeah. of exactly what you need to do and the site every single day, every single morning to wake up and to do exactly what you have on that list. Mm. That's what I'd say. Yeah. Can I ask you, Kenji, what yeah. do you, what's, when you get approached by international students, yeah. what's kind of, what are the common questions or what's the most common question that you get asked by them? I think normally the most common question is exactly what we're talking about. So how do I apply for medical school in the UK? You know, mm -hmm. like why do I, what are the benefits and exactly how do I do it? Because I think for UK students like me, it's really, it's, it's a very like well-known process here in the UK because we have all of the, you know, we have advisors in school who've done the exact same thing, we have family who've done the same thing. But when you're on the other side of the world, in maybe South Africa or, uh, you know, South America, where you don't, you may not necessarily have access to this information that is available, that can be quite hard. And that's, that's, that's normally what they tend to ask. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of common questions I get is, are oh, what medical mm. schools can I apply to? Which yeah, is yeah. exactly why I made that video that I was referring to earlier, which I'd uh, highly recommend you go and have a look at. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Ash, for coming onto the channel. Um, you've been nice really, 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 really helpful. And I think everyone will benefit from this video. Um, as I said, um, Ash has a company called Future Doc, which I'll be putting all the information down below in the description. Uh, make sure you go check it out. Make sure um, you have a look at the course. I think it really is helpful and it's something I definitely would have done if I was an international student uh, myself. Uh, yes, yeah, so thank you so much. And we're gonna make a second video in a moment uh, talking about how Ash um, has both a dentistry degree and also a medical degree um, and how he wants to uh, pursue a career in max, max facial uh, surgery. Is that how you say it? Maxillofacial. Max, well, max Vax for short. Max Vax surgery. So check our video out um, and we'll see you guys on the next one.